Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring choose your membership rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Fabulous friends, fans, and superstars, welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 30th, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, and actually it is this week that holds what I am calling the most intense day of the year. And we are in a period between eclipses. That is only going to magnify the intensity of this time. Remember, the period between eclipses is when it is said that the veil between the worlds is especially thin. It is, on the one hand, easier to access information from our ancestors and our spirit guides, to feel a depth of connection to them, to understand their wisdom and the ways in which they send it to us. But at the same time, though, it can heighten our learning. And sometimes learning happens in ways that don't always feel comfortable. We have a lot of beautiful energy this week, energy that can have us floating on clouds, believing in beautiful things and beautiful things, loving things, easy things are possible now. Blessings and abundance are possible now. But as we move later and later into the week, we are building towards an important alignment between Mars and Pluto. These two planets standing across the sky from each other happens about once every two years, and it is always a turning point. In at least one area of life, we are invited to consider our power, but more importantly, the limits of our power, and to understand what it is that now must change. We get to the core, we get to the root, and we are invited to transform on that level. But of course, that is work that takes consciousness. That is work that takes intention. And we live in a world, we have co-created a world where not everyone has embraced that journey. Not everyone is necessarily cut out for that. And that's okay. We all are where we need to be as part of our own unique journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. Love and wisdom doesn't necessarily mean being passive, of course. Love is a very active principle, actually. Cultivating wisdom is a very active principle as well. But there are moments that ask for surrender, that ask us to take into consideration how it is that we can practice acceptance as a way of empowerment, and how it is that ultimately, by recognizing the limits of our power, we are made more powerful. It is in recognizing the limits of our power that we're then able to recognize what power we can exercise in our own lives. And one of the greatest powers we actually have is over our own actions and over ourselves. That split second it takes between stimuli and response, that is the invitation of this very special and notable alignment. But once every two years, that's when Mars stands across the sky from Pluto. And other than the conjunction of Mars and Pluto, which also happens about once every two years, other than that aspect, this is the most intense in my experience and in my view. Mars right now is in the sign of Cancer. And Mars doesn't necessarily like being in the sign of cancer, doesn't operate very well here, isn't able to bring forward its very best qualities. And this understanding of how signs uh, speak to planets and how planets operate within signs uh, is actually a traditional astrological understanding of how planets operate. And so to the ancients, the sign of cancer is a place where Mars doesn't really operate at its very best. And so here we have Mars, symbol of action and empowerment in the sign of Cancer, an energy that is ultimately one of stopping, of being receptive, of being intuitive. How is it now that Mars is going to understand its power 
and understand how to use that power. That is part of the challenge here. But the thing is that sometimes it's necessity that calls for invention. And it is likely going to be out of necessity. The necessity may be strong emotion, overpowering feelings, a strong sense of an external circumstance that maybe doesn't feel as easy but invites us to examine our own feelings and to find power within them. The energy of cancer and every sign has its own ways of helping us to understand spiritual principles. They represent different spiritual principles that we all hold. And the energy of cancer is deeply sensitive, but the key really is to approve of oneself. If you approve of yourself, then the opinions of others matter less. You're less sensitive to the opinions of others. If you know thyself, to know thyself and to live your truth is one of the strongest armors you can take on. Because when you are deeply connected to what is true for you, the opinions of others, the actions of others, they just don't matter or they don't matter as much, if at all. And of course, we are not isolated. We are not islands. We want to be receptive to each other. It is a part of the human experience. One of the most incredible parts of the human experience is that we can feel. We can be aware of each other. We can be moved by each other. We can feel the love from others towards us and feel a greater sense of love within as a result. However, there is a point when we have to be mindful of what energies we are letting in to ensure that the energies that we do let in are those guided by principles of greater love and greater wisdom. Being so deeply connected to that essence of identity of ourselves, because that is essentially what we are. We are the very essence of love and wisdom. And we are here to own that more fully. That's what I think. That's what I like to affirm in the world that we are here to more fully embody love and wisdom to strengthen that energy within us as we grow through this lifetime more and more, leaving behind the barriers towards our own acknowledgement of greater love and greater wisdom. Some of us, and this might be a judgment, and I know it is, but some of us may be further along on that journey than others. Some of us are more conscious of that journey than others. And so where is it then that we can be sensitive to the fact that we are all on different places in our own unique journeys towards this full acknowledgement of greater love and greater wisdom while also staying in touch with our own power and our own sensitivity. And instead of judging others, which we do, which we have a tendency to do, we are human after all, strive to keep the focus on ourselves as much as possible. That may be hard. I want to be very straightforward with you here. With Mars standing across the sky from Pluto, we may attract particularly intense experiences. I see this as an energy of our buttons being pushed. It's not easy. It's not kind. But it can be profoundly healing, especially when it occurs within a safe space and in a safe setting especially when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable to people that we trust, that have shown us that we can trust them. And in those spaces, allow ourselves to be moved to that level where yes, perhaps we are evoked or provoked in some way, but we know it's good for us. We know that this is part of what ultimately is going to strengthen us, strengthen our resolve, our commitment to self-love, our commitment to self-approval. And when these moments come about in safe spaces, everyone is made better as a result. It's important for us to keep perspective as well. Um, where is it that intentions are not so benevolent and where is it that perhaps they are? Where is it that we are striving to be more honest with ourselves and with each other? That is difficult work to do, but that is the work that we may be called to do now. And so the strong stirring of emotion is going to be characteristic here. The sense of a buildup towards a turning point is something that a lot of us are going to be feeling. 
heightened sensitivities, heightened reactions as part of the characteristic of this time. But the promise is there to get to the root so that true healing can occur, to get to the root, to get to the truth so that we are transformed and we are stronger. And that shell that the crab carries is one that is made of and strengthened by love and wisdom, principles of love and wisdom. Let that guide us now. The energy of Pluto, of course, Pluto is the god of the underworld. And when we think about the underworld, a lot happens there. A lot of fun can happen there as well. We think about things like underground parties, right? Lots of fun stuff happens in the off hours, which is what Pluto represents. But that's also where we may store some of our older wounds. Some of those automated responses that are arising from the shadow that we may not realize is actually our shadow. That shadow is ultimately the part of us that we deny is within us. We may project that out onto other people. The opposition is known for being an aspect of projection. So we may project this energy out onto other people. We may say that all that stuff that's buried within us is actually in somebody else and that they are the ones provoking us. We may look at others now as a way of escaping looking at ourselves because looking at ourselves sometimes is painful. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we may see things that we don't really like within ourselves, but that's actually when we are most empowered because that's when we actually have power to move towards those principles and those ideals that we hold, that we would like to be, that we would like to embody. So where is it that we have been cruel? Because Pluto can be cruel. I want to be straightforward with you. I believe that the universe is wise and loving, but I'm not Pollyanna. I believe that sometimes it is through challenging moments that we are able to claim and own our energy of love and wisdom that much more. And so where is it now that we may need to look at where we may have not been so nice, but also to look at the pain behind where it is that another's intention may not be so nice and also to not take it on. That is genuine empowerment to acknowledge that someone else is acting in pain and to choose not to make it personal, not to take it on, to allow them to feel whatever it is that they need to feel while standing in the ideals that we hold, the self-concept that we hold, the principles that we hold of greater love and greater wisdom. Now there's gonna be an abundance of love and wisdom, let me just say that. And let's talk about some of the really incredible things that are happening this week as well. So as we begin the week, Right around late Sunday or Monday, depending on where you are on the planet, Mars in Cancer is going to align in supreme harmony with Neptune. This is the type of conversation that astrologers call a trine, and it is inspired, it is inspiring, it is an energy of healing and hope, and even miracles accelerated at this time. But just know that this energy can get very carried away. And the higher we go is as low as we're going to go. So if we allow ourselves and if we want, we can get very caught up in a moment. Now, this moment might be very romantic. It might be very spiritual. It might be very compassionate. It might be very plugged into source. It might be very idealistic. But it is a high nonetheless, and it is us getting all wrapped up in a moment, wrapped up in an experience that feels really good in the moment. But for every high, there's a low, and that low comes late in the week when Mars stands across the sky from Pluto. That is the moment of honesty. That is what we will pay for how high we are willing to go at the beginning of the week. Just being aware of where it is perhaps we are allowing ourselves to get carried away on a dream, on a fantasy, is enough to bring balance. That's more than enough to help bring us closer to Earth so that when we do get to that place late in the week of Mars standing across the sky from Pluto, we're able to more fully own the truth and it's able to arrive with greater ease. We don't come crashing down to Earth or crashing to emotional depths, rather. 
but we're able to maintain balance. We're able to use the energy of Mars and Pluto to find a depth of truth that ultimately facilitates meaningful transformation in ourselves and perhaps even in others as well. Now on Wednesday, Venus will change signs and Venus is going to move into the sign of Cancer. In contrast to Mars, Venus loves being in the sign of Cancer. According to the ancients, this is where she's able to bring forward some of her very best, most beautiful qualities. And so having Venus here in and of itself is a good thing. It magnifies the energy of love for all of us around the world. That's beautiful. And almost immediately on Thursday is when Venus will align with Jupiter in supreme harmony. This is beautiful energy. This is lush. This is energy of ease and love and abundance. And so wherever it is that we're hoping for more, whether we want more to mean easier, more joyous, more pleasurable, or if more means more abundance and more prosperity, or maybe more means love for us, love is going to be especially magnified now. If Jupiter conjunct Venus is the most romantic day of the year, which does happen every year, then Venus trying Jupiter is not so far away <laughs> as well. It is a very romantic energy and a very beautiful energy at that. If it is that you are so inspired, now keep in mind Mercury is retrograde and I'll talk about Mercury retrograde in just a moment. But if you are so inspired and if you feel called to play with your look uh, as part of connecting to your unique expression of beauty, this is wonderful energy to do just that. All else being equal, of course. You do want to be careful. I don't like that Mars and Pluto energy where it comes to anything that cuts into the skin, especially as we navigate towards the end of the week. But where it comes to you connecting to what makes you feel like you are able to step into and own your beauty that much more, this energy can be very helpful in that regard. This energy can actually be very joyous. It can make that journey that much more fun as well. Now, on the same day as this beautiful connection between Venus and Jupiter, just a few hours earlier, the sun will connect with Saturn in supreme harmony. I love that this energy is happening in tandem to this very romantic energy because the sun and Saturn speaking in this way is grounding. But it's also reward, reward that is based on what we have earned, where we've put in the time, where we've put in the sacrifice. Now can come a sense of progress in at least one area of life. The sun right now is in the sign of Gemini. It is Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. It's home sign of Aquarius. You put these together and it does suggest that it is the ideas that we've expressed, the connections we've made with others, the conversations, the communications that we've shared that now can lend themselves to solid gains in some way. At the very least, it can lend itself to a stabilizing influence. A random conversation can help us to feel more secure within, help us to access an energy of greater maturity, of greater responsibility, the kind that does fuel healthy self-respect at that. Where it is that we are hoping to make solid gains, we're focused on manifesting something meaningful to us. And especially where it comes to understanding the ideas behind manifesting something meaningful or where it is that perhaps certain connections allow us to manifest something meaningful. This energy can be very helpful in that regard. But it's going to be helpful in another regard as well. And this is where I come to Mercury retrograde. If you remember last week, I talked about Mercury square Neptune. That energy with Mercury slowing down to a standstill, going retrograde while in orb to Neptune, is going to remain sort of free-floating, dominant in the ether in some way throughout this week. Mercury and Neptune will make their second of three exact connections at the end of this week, like literally uh, minutes before the perfection of the Mars-Pluto opposition. And so I find this really intriguing and really interesting because what this suggests is as much as Mars and Pluto are getting us to the truth, an emotional truth, the truth of what we feel, Mercury square Neptune is saying that we may not be seeing things clearly. 
We may not be communicating clearly. There might be mixed messages. There may be misunderstandings. Misunderstandings, very possible, very likely under this energy. And where it is perhaps we need to think differently about a matter, that may show up for us. Now, thankfully, with the Sun and Saturn, I feel like there's going to be this awareness that a lot of us have that, you know, maybe I'm not thinking very clearly around this particular matter. Maybe my emotions are coloring how it is that I'm understanding right now. Or maybe something deeper is being provoked that doesn't actually have to do with this moment. And you'd be surprised how often that happens. How often it is that we may misdirect our energies, that we're actually upset about or hurt about something more deep that we are unable or not ready to acknowledge, that our psyche is not ready to acknowledge. So we'll take that energy and we'll direct it at a particular person, place, thing, or situation. And we'll make that particular situation much bigger than it actually is because it's actually safer for us to look at something more immediate than to go deeper. Now, this is actually a phenomenon that is rooted in an idea of Freud's. So Sigmund Freud wrote an essay called On Mourning and Melancholia. And I read this essay years ago as an undergrad and it changed my life. I'll tell you, it changed my life because in this essay, Freud talks about how it is that when it is that the psyche is not ready to look at the core issues, the core anger that is there because the consequences would be too great. So according to Freud, what Freud thought was that we're angry at our parents, basically. Whoever our parents were, whatever they did, no matter how good they were, they didn't do it right. And so we're angry at them. But the thing is that to our psyche, our parents are equivalent to God. And so to actually acknowledge anger or to challenge our parents is to the psyche to challenge God itself. And that is huge. That is a lot for a psyche to do, to bear. And so what will happen with that energy is that it will turn in on itself and manifest as depression. That's essentially what this essay says. When I read this essay, I thought about all the different ways in which energy can be misdirected, how we may have these core angers, these core wounds, these core moments in our perhaps early life that shaped us, but we are unable to fully own the trauma of that. And so it'll come out in all kinds of other ways. When it is like, for example, we might be unhappy in our marriage, in our relationship, but the consequence of admitting that to ourselves is too great because then we would have to change. And if we actually change, that could uproot our whole lives and maybe lots of things that we like about our life, like our social standing or maybe our home that we live in, etc. And so instead, that energy will come out in other ways. You know, we'll talk about how unfair uh, someone at a, a clerk at a store was to us when really that might not have been the case at all. I remember working in Walmart <laughs> years ago. It was like 20 years ago that I worked at Walmart before university. And I'll always be grateful for that experience and that time working in customer service because you saw this all the time. All the time you saw this. You saw how something minute, a minutia of a thing and how a customer would react. And what was the reason behind that? Very often you could see that, okay, something else is going on with this person. They're upset about some other situation, but they're not able to look at that. And so they're getting upset over something that really doesn't matter. That's really insignificant. And they're making it out to be some huge unfairness to them. They're making it out to feel as if they're a big victim when they may actually have situations in their lives that have an element of unfairness to them, but they're not able to acknowledge that because then they would have to change. The consequences would be too great. The psyche is not ready for it. And so these wonderful people who work in customer service are the ones who end up sometimes being the receivers of this misdirected energy. And we see it online as well, right? We see it in all kinds of places and spaces. 
And so as I look at the sky, I feel like, and especially with what is happening with the energy of Gemini, which has to do with perception and communication and how the mind functions, how our minds work. Where is it that we are misdirecting energy and where is it that we can have that one second of pause to consider that? That am I really upset about this situation or is there something deeper? Is there something else? That is the invitation of this week and this time and especially of the larger Mercury retrograde season that we are in that I have been saying is a doozy. This is a doozy of a Mercury retrograde season and this very energy, this doozy of an energy is going to be dominant while we have some very emotional celestial events taking place at the same time. And so navigating this time with awareness can go a very, very long way to ultimately bringing wisdom and love into our experience and into our conscious experience at that. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here. It is a powerful time. We have the most intense day of this year, and this year has a lot of intense days, right? We had Saturn station recently, Coming up very soon, in about two weeks' time, we're going to have the second Saturn-Uranus square. That's going to be intense as well. So there's a lot to look forward to at this time, but we are in a period of eclipses. Everything is already that much more heightened, including our spiritual lessons, including experiences that provoke or evoke what learning there is for us to do. And ultimately, this learning is good. Ultimately, this learning is about aligning us consciously with the energy of love and wisdom that much more fully. And it is going to be a celestial climate like this. That opposition of Mars and Pluto is one that a lot of us are going to be feeling. It is so important for us to strive to the best of our ability to be aware to be gentle and kind to ourselves and to each other, especially at this time, especially with the sky. Our spiritual lessons are already heightened, but here we're going to go to a new depth of understanding. And there, getting to the core is where meaningful transformation can occur. The kind that can transform the trajectory of our lives, accelerating that journey forward towards greater love and greater wisdom as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you so much to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs ups. All of it means so much. And if you would like to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you in your sign, including the Mars-Pluto opposition, including Venus trying Jupiter, and so much more, you can now log on to Nadia Shaw Superstars and sign up for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Just $3 a month gets you access to the expanded, exclusive weekly video scopes for each and every sign. So it's not that you just get one sign for $3 a month. You get each and every sign each and every week for just $3 a month. Higher tiers get you unlimited access to special horoscopes, including the recent Jupiter in Pisces special horoscopes that I produced. And higher tiers than that get you class passes to Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Link is in the description below. Synchronicity University Summer School. Choose your tuition rate. Just two days left. To choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class. And classes start this coming week. They're right around the corner. Uh, and there's lots of wonderful classes that are going to be offered this summer. A total of 10 classes with summer school are going to be offered. We're going to start with more on the seventh house. Planets in the seventh house is what we're going to look at this coming weekend. But over the course of summer school, we're going to be looking at the seventh house, the fifth house, the third house. We're going to be looking at pet astrology. Uh, we are going to look at rectification, which is uh, figuring out a birth time when a person doesn't know their birth time so that we can get as accurate a chart as possible. So I'll be sharing some of those techniques with you and so much more at summer school. 
of Synchronicity University coming up very soon, starting this coming week. So again, just two days left to choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class at synchronicityuniversity.com. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University, our current speaker series is wrapping up with the one and only Achuta of Night Light Astrology. He is just so brilliant. Uh, and he gave us a little bit of a preview in an interview that I did with him on mystical Saturn. That's what his talk is going to be about. Considering that Saturn recently went retrograde, I think this is going to be a very powerful talk to look at Saturn through the ages. So you can join us for that this Thursday at synchronicityuniversity.com. Link is in the description below. Synchronicity University traditional techniques for the 21st century astrologer with Michael Barwick is going to wrap up this week as well. And we are ending on a high note looking at the Hellenistic lots, also known as Arabic parts. And this is going to include the part of fortune and the part of spirit taught by the one and only Michael Barwick. We have had this very wonderful, very successful class that has taken place. So this is the fifth and final class that he's going to be teaching. If you've been saving and waiting and wanting to know about the part of fortune and the part of spirit and how they are connected in the chart, as well as learn about other Arabic parts as well, well, you can log on to synchronicityuniversity.com and sign up for Michael's class coming up this week at synchronicityuniversity.com. Link is in the description below. Tarot Summer School starts this week. I'm so excited about participating in this and honored to participate in Tarot Summer School as well. It's the first time I'm doing so, but really it is some of uh, the best tarot teachers in the world getting together and just a wonderful program behind these weekly classes that are going to be taking place to help you to understand your tarot practice from all different types of angles. I'm going to be teaching on astrological aspects for outstanding tarot readings. So that's the class I'm going to be teaching, and I've never taught that before. So I think that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I know that coming up this week, there's a campfire event, and that is for people who've signed up for these classes. So if you'd like to join the other teachers and see what's coming up, you can do that as well. I will link to Tarot Summer School below, whether you want to sign up for just my class, whether you want to sign up for the entire package, I would love to see you there. Link is in the description below. And of course, my own class package on Tarot for Astrologers. This is a five class package of classes that I have taught. We go through each and every card. We actually go through the history of the modern tarot movement. And then we look at the astrological correspondences of each and every card. We look at the Toth tarot deck and the Rider Waite tarot deck side by side, exploring these cards one at a time. Uh, the first two classes look at the major arcana. And then the third class looks at the court cards and the ace cards. And then the final two classes, so for a total of five classes, we go through the remaining minor arcana cards. And this class is so thorough and it is a bestseller at synchronicityuniversity.com. If you log on now and you sign up, uh, what happens is you get the package, you get $55 off and you get instant downloads and you get the PDF. So you get the PDFs, you get the video webinar downloads, all of that ready to go so that you can enjoy tarot for astrologers at synchronicityuniversity.com. And finally, you can get my take on your unique birth chart by logging on to Cosmogram, checking out my partnership with Cosmogram. Link is in the description below. At Cosmogram, you go onto their website, you enter in your birth data, and within hours, you will be emailed a PDF of your birth chart and the different planetary aspects that are there and my interpretation of those different planetary aspects. If you go onto the Cosmogram website, there's actually a sample report there. So you'll know exactly what it is that you are going to get. Thank you so much to everybody who's already ordered one of these, enjoyed one of these, loves one of these. All of it, it does mean so much. Your trust means so much. And I hope that you love and cherish this astrology report written by me forever. So again, my partnership with Cosmogram.com. And link is in the description below. That'll take you right to the report that I created, I co-created with them and wrote those descriptions. And again, I hope you absolutely love it. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. 
Uh, thank you for this moment with you. We are in very special times as part of a very special year, but this week in particular, I know that there are very big celestial events that do take place. Like for example, Saturn square Uranus, that's a very big deal, of course. That's gonna to speak to the collective and our own individual experience as well. But then we have these very powerful alignments that become a lot more visceral, a lot more immediate, like Mars opposite Pluto. But it isn't just that Mars is opposite Pluto, it's that it's happening in a period between eclipses. So my hope is that we embrace this time and that we embrace our lessons, that we are willing to look at our own selves and our own shadow, as alluring as it may be to put the focus on someone else. At the end of the day, it is you and it is I that need to be at peace with ourselves and our choices. How much at peace we are, well, that may show up for us as well as the opportunity to heal so that we actually can find that deeper layer of self-love and self-acceptance. And I think from that place, if more people loved themselves, the world would be a much more peaceful, much more loving place. And so whatever role our own individual journeys take us in that direction, I think ultimately as part of the wisdom can end up being a wonderful thing. Thank you again for watching. I'm truly so grateful for it. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.